Primitive Life, a novel by Louise Richardson, read by the author. Chapter 1, Academia, Part 3. In the year 2001, Professor Roy Nordstrom tells his student, Leah Pollock, that their summer fling is over. Roy's marriage with his wife, Faye, is in trouble. In 1991, Roy Nordstrom graduated high in his class from the University of Southern California. It was never a struggle for him, neither was it a struggle in graduate school. There was no struggle with his doctor's thesis uninspired as it may have been. He met Faye, then the love of his life, in graduate school, and they married after he received his doctorate in marine biology. And before she finished her graduate studies in world geography, Roy became the youngest full professor of biology in the history of Central Texas State University after, to the dismay of his bride, turning down an associate professorship at Hilo State in Hawaii, and also to the dismay of Harvey Llewellyn, his Syntex State colleague, who became a full professor himself only after a decade and a half of struggle and maybe a few beers. Harvey Llewellyn did not graduate high in his University of Chicago class of 1979, but not for the lack of trying. Perhaps he could have tried harder not to guzzle beer all night before each major exam, although he was alternately studying along with his guzzling. He guzzled and studied through graduate school and through his doctor's thesis. It was a struggle for him. His personal habits did not make things any easier, but he embraced the struggle it took to achieve his Ph.D. in limnology, the study of lakes and rivers and other bodies of fresh water. Harvey, what time is it? Oh, six oh one, and half a dozen of the other. Shit, look at this place. Well, it doesn't look any worse than the office. Maybe I can get a student intern to sort that out for me. Nah. Don't want to open another can of worms. Hell, I've got tenure. Why shouldn't I have a crack at department head? I've got at least 12 years of Wally Parkinson and Roy the Viking God. Sure, he's neat and well-kempt, if that's the phrase. But this ain't no beauty contest. Or is it? Yes, his office is immaculate. He doesn't do any work. No, he teaches and publishes drivel, rehash of real scientist work. But Harvey Llewellyn does the research around here. I study the little buggers and measure them and note their location and watch their behavior for hours, days at a time. My precious amphibians, I am noted as one of this state's foremost authorities on newts and salamanders. I even discovered the tree frog Hyla Llewellyni, the damn things named after me. Years before he kicked the bucket, didn't Chairman Jackman practically tell me I was his choice of successor, but I'm not the flavor of the month, fair-haired new kid on the block. I've published dozens of monographs in real science journals, and this blonde wunderkind writes some pop science crap of a book that gets on the New York Times bestseller list, gets his picture on page 14 of last November's Scientific American, plus a back page write-up in the local newspaper. So callow student bastards clamor for his received wisdom and alumni divert some of their cash in his name to the biological scientist department. Funds previously earmarked 
for football grants and it's 6 fucking 23 a.m. I've got a general biology lab to teach at 7. I'll put a breakfast burrito in the microwave while I shower. No time to shave. I'll just have to look like Don Johnson in Miami Vice. If only I could pull that off. I was in shape once when Don Johnson was in Miami Vice. Still, I shouldn't be even ten minutes late. The young gits won't get a chance to walk. On a pleasant Saturday morning, Leah Pollock and her little sister Sarah drifted on the cold, dark green, shady Kamal River on their Schlitterbahn inner tubes. Leah was daydreaming. Sarah was restless. Want to go to the other side of the park and ride the tall slide again? Sarah asked. I like it right here, Sarah, Leah told her. You're no fun anymore, the 11-year-old decided. Just wait till you grow up a little, pipsqueak, Leah countered. You'll be no fun anymore either. Why don't you find your boyfriend then? I saw him in the lagoon. Barry and I are through. Does he know that? Sarah inquired. None of your business, Leah explained. Being so grown up doesn't seem like fun to me. Sarah kicked her feet in the cold green water. Fun isn't everything, Sarah. Leah slapped the river, splashing on her little sister. Life is not all fun. Sarah flung an arc of surface at her. Let's go back to Mom and Daddy in the wave pool. Then you can go off and mope on your own. Leah slung back. I'm not moping, just contemplating. What's that, Sarah asked, thinking to you, Leah said, gently kicking the child's inner tube away. Sarah shrugged it off. Oh. Leah pulled Sarah's inner tube and Sarah to her with her longer legs. Okay, I'll dump you with the folks. Just let me relax a while. Fine, the sister said curtly. Fine, Leah agreed. Leah closed her eyes seeing only a fading dapple of sunlight filtered through the cypresses and cottonwoods. But before she could nap, Sarah broke her repose. Can I go with you? Sarah asked her. Leah tried to stay relaxed. Go where? To Corpus. We're going to Galveston Island, not Corpus, Leah told her. It's a hundred miles or so up the coast. They have a Schlitter bomb there, too. It's called Schlitter Bon, not Bomb, she corrected the child. It means slippery road or something like that in German. It's mostly a made up name, I think. Then how do you know it's not Schlitter Bomb? Sarah made a face. Then she continued the interrogation. So can I go with you? No, it's just our college biology class, Leah said. I can collect bugs, too. We're collecting crabs and jellyfish and fish, Sarah, not bugs. I can do that, the child said, undaunted. You can't go. Is Barry going with you and your handsome teacher? Barry's not in the same class. Leah could see the truth of that Freudian slip. She splashed her sister to change the subject. Sarah screamed, laughed, and splashed back at her, so the water war began. End of Part 3 Primitive Life Chapter 1 Academia